asleep on his desk in the middle of a story. He was a rare breed, uh, old school, relentless, and unwaveringly principled. The world is a poorer place without Miguel Presenio. I've lost count how many reporters were killed in Mexico this year. 11? 14. <laughs> they guarantee you freedom of the press. If you kill a reporter for doing his job, there hasn't been a single prosecution, not one. Miguel is an American citizen. We're not going to let his killers go free. But I need your help to catch them. <laughs> you still want his notes? Anything you're willing to give. I keep thinking, even now, Miguel wouldn't have helped you. Even to solve his own murder, he would have stuck to his guns and told you no. But I am not that principled. And this is the second bedroom. Kind of perfect to start a family. That's a little cart before the horse. You'll find someone. Blake is bisexual, so twice the playing field. Oh, my God. So is this a load-bearing wall? I'll check. Oh, imagine what you could do in that kitchen. I'm sure, but guys, don't you think this is a little much? Ugh. It's a modest two-bedroom apartment for a young professional. I knew this was going to happen. What? Well, you've been an assistant for too long. It got up in your head. You don't think you're worthy of bigger things. <laughs> Why so shameful about wanting to live within my means? No, I'm not just talking about an apartment. You used to want to do things and change things. You know, some would view the morning that I spent preparing a binder on global water shortages so we don't have a catastrophe in sub-Saharan Africa as doing more to help the world than balancing a spreadsheet for some mutual fund. No one is doubting the work you're doing. We just want you to reach for more for yourself. I've been talking to my friend Tim Williams. Oh, Tim. His cousin runs a political consulting firm and they think a guy with your experience would be a great asset for them. Dad, there's nothing, nothing more insufferable than spending all day with some overpaid policy bro. You would be doing the same work you're doing now with a chance to advance to move up in the world. We're just asking you to consider it. That's all we're asking. Oh. <laughs> I, I get it. You're buying me an apartment so you can leverage me into doing what leverage. you want. Leverage? No one is leveraging. You guys, you you. come on, guys. No, come, come on, on, come on. Please. I am happy. Can't you see that I'm happy? I have a, I have a great life. I have a great job. I have a small studio apartment that gets way too hot in the summer, but we think that you should... I know what you one. think. I know what you think, and I respect it. I'm sorry you don't respect me. No, like, that's, that's ridiculous. Look, How could you even... Mm. But good luck with the investments. What? All right? I love you. I'll call you later. Good news, man. No, not good. Ridiculously amazing. Go ahead. Miguel Brezzani's notes are a treasure trove. You figured out where Macias is? Oh, no, not at all. That would have been amazing, too. However, when Briseño told you that his next story could change things, big understatement. Huge, actually. He learned that, that Macias has a friend high up in the Mexican government. Like nosebleed high up. We're figuring deputy level in the judiciary, something like that. Which would explain why Macias is always one step ahead of the federal. Eh? Exactly. Now, we don't have a name yet, but we do have an alias, El Aguila. The Eagle. Pretty good, right? As in sees everything. Anyway, Brezenia thought there was only days from tracking down this guy's actual identity. So you think we can finish the job? Yes, ma'am. Miguel discovered the names of some offshore dummy corporations that launder El Aguila's money. We have an army of INR agents, accountants, basically the whole department sorting out ownership as we speak. Once we trace the money to a name, El Aguila will be El Atrapado. Encarcelado. All right. And DEA just located Macias. You are aware this is a remote intelligence office. A U.S. senator can't just barge in here. I don't need you scolding me, Professor. I came here in an unmarked car with no security. Why? My staff heard about these shady characters posing as reporters, asking my PAC donors how they make their money. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, of course not. Why would you admit to doing oppo research on me to help your wife's career?